Ben. Say what? Yes, sir. What? Say. Say it again. What? Say what? Stop it! Stop it! This is. We look forward to this part of the show every single Thursday. It's a time for us to get up close and personal with a Bible verse. More importantly, get up close and personal with the prayer leader of the Auckland Church Network, who goes by the name of Mr. Dale Campbell. You handsome man. How are you Morena, doing? Morena, guys. Morena! Nice to have you in, Dale. Hey, by the way, thought I'd throw this out there because we catch up with Dale every week. Yeah. We look at some part of the Bible or something around to do with the Bible, often a misheard lyric or verse from it. If you've mm. got a particular verse that you're like, I've never really understood this or know what it means or it seems odd or uh, what, mm. what the mm. heck, um, feel free to text that in and maybe um, Dale could take a look at it. Yeah, there, sure. there'll, there'll be plenty. So, yeah, we encourage you to do that actually this morning. Um, so Dale can unpack it when he pops in on a Thursday. What, which one are we looking at this morning? So yeah, this one um, was a verse in a sermon at my own church this last week. I just think it's a really great verse that, that, that's easy to misunderstand. So, Were second, you giving the sermon? No, oh. no, no. <laughs> it's um, a really good... I'm going to give a you the sermon. A wise man once said. Yeah. <laughs> one of our elders, good guy, gave a great sermon on, on this passage. Okay. Right? Um, but, the, but this one verse out of the passage, I think you get it, it's, it can be heard in a weird way if, if, it, if you don't get it right. So okay. this is Second Chronicles 16, 9. And it goes like this. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to strengthen those whose hearts are perfect towards him. And I think for me, like you can hear that and you can think, perfect? Really? Like, is, is this, I'm not sure I like this picture of God. It's like God's up there. It's like, I got my eye on you. I'd like to strengthen you, or actually I don't, but... I'm watching your heart, and is it perfect? I might strengthen you if your heart's perfect. High bar to reach you know I mean? perfection, isn't it? And it's like God doesn't even, he's, he's out to get us. He's out to find fault, you know, and the bar's pretty high. Now, I mean, the context of this is obviously this this king Asa or Asa, um, who has trusted God for another battle that's happened against a big Chaldean army. But then when it comes to his, his neighboring Israeli army, he was a king of Judah. Um, he tried to make a, a treaty with another nation, so he was kind of relying on human strength, and he gets gets critiqued for that. But um, I mean, look, something in me just just revolts against the the perfectionism. We we all know what it's like to to have that bar too high and to feel discouraged, you know. Yeah. But I guess today I thought it would be interesting to explore the other extreme, where we can actually kind of justify not even trying properly. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like because I think that's a, that's another extreme that we can go to. We can kind of justify struggling. Before we get to that, though, yeah. I'm really glad that you're bringing this up because it is a very high bar, and in yeah. today's day and age, especially for our young people, they struggle with perfection and imperfection. Totally. And they're in fr- social media is in front of them day in, day out, right? Yes. And it's it's not a good thing when you know you're you're reading lines that. That say that may say to somebody, "Well, I'm actually short of this mark." Exactly. It and, feels and like you're competing with the unattainable. Well, exactly. That's and, right. And, and then the mental strain that, that that has on not only young people but but adults as well. So I mean, I I mean, different verses will use different words like entirely committed or whatever. But in mm. some ways, it doesn't help because you still end up with like this this standard that can feel quite high. So yeah. here's a way of thinking about it, right? So if you imagine a circle. Right? You draw on a piece of paper a circle, and in the middle of the circle, you put the cross, put Jesus, put the Lord God in the middle. Now, in, and you put yourself, am I in or out of the circle? You know, Do I attend church? Am I close to God? Am I close to the center? Or am I far from God? You know, I, I, I think it's more important. It's not just where you're located, close to the cross or outside the circle, inside the circle. It's also, am I pivoted towards him? You know, So you can actually be a church leader. Really important person, very visibly close, you might think, to the center, to Christ. But if you're oriented away from him, if you're arrogant, if you're selfish, self-seeking, dishonest, if you've got all sorts of issues, um, it means that you're, you're blocking the power that God wants to give you. Whereas you can actually be outside the circle. You can feel outside the circle. Maybe someone else thinks you're outside the circle, but you can actually be oriented, pointed towards God. So it's okay. more your direction than yeah. your, your current um, place. And it's like, I mean, the, some things in the Christian life are a spectrum, but some things are kind of on and off. Like, like, like God's power can only flow through me if I'm letting it, if I'm working with God. You know, God yeah. sometimes just doesn't. And it's not like he, he's deciding whether or not he wants to love us or not. <laughs> 
he loves us even when we're we're oriented away from him. Mm. You know, so this yeah. is not a shame thing. This isn't a judgment thing. This is just a this is this is how it works. So like like the, the weight of a hammer will only strike the nail and drive the nail if you're focused properly. Or if you think of someone yeah. who's a financial investor who wants to invest their money in good causes in the world, they're looking for people doing good so that I can invest my money and it'll do good. God's like that. You know, it's like he's like looking for someone who's who's going to steward his resources and his power. And so he's like, yeah, I, I would love to empower you if you're on about my business, if you're about my kingdom. So that's kind of the, it's just it's just the way it works. Perfection is a yep. um, pretty el elusive <laughs> <laughs> target, right? Yes. It's an interesting one when you talked about, um, you know, not not like disregarding even trying in, in terms of your relationship with yes. God. It's kind of, and uh, if I think about like Old Testament, New Testament, there's kind of, there was the law, which was very much maybe based, you could look at it as like a perfectionist kind of model of like, I've got you all could. these things you that could. I need to try and do, and that makes me worthy or right with yes. God. And then it's like, that all changes. Jesus arrives, fulfills the law, yeah. offers grace, offers freedom. And then there's the potential of people to be like, yeah, well, none of that even matters anymore. Basically, exactly. I don't need to do any of that. I don't even need to care almost about how I live my life because That's God right. loves me either way. So, well, caution to the wind, do whatever. It's all good. Yeah, I mean, and I where, do you, where do you find yourself somewhere in between there? Yeah, I mean, the great story on that one, which is such a good point, is, is the, the Good Samaritan story, the, the, the conversation with the law expert where Jesus tells that story. Because he's, he's, like, he's like, how do I show that I'm in? How, how do I, what do I do, you know? And, and Jesus says, well, he kind of turns the question back on him, and it says that there's this conversation about the law, which is what you were just talking about. And he summarizes the law. There's, there's 613 commandments in the law. And Jesus, you know, the, the law expert knows that we can summarize it in two, love God, love others. But, but Jesus isn't just interested in, quote-unquote, keeping the law. He, this whole passage around the, the Good Samaritan is about go and do likewise. So he wants us to actually be loving and align our hearts to him totally, completely, not, not in, a, in a mathematical perfection sense. That's probably the, the concept of perfection that we bring to the table. Right. It's not about mathematical perfection. It's just about relational connection and orientation and really just, just saying, man, yes, of course I'm not perfect, but I'm in. I'm fully in. God, it's about thinking about your day. Like, how, how, how can I be a servant today? God's going to empower you. If you, if you start your day thinking, how can I help people? How can I spread his kingdom today? Then that's, God's going to empower you for that. That's what he does. But if, if, if I'm worried about myself, how am I performing? Am I a good person? Am yeah. I a bad person? I'm just thinking about myself. I was going to ask you a practical step that somebody could use to actually, yeah. you know, um, align, realign themselves. But that yeah. question that you asked, that, that you're asking us to ask ourselves. Yes. What, uh, can you say it again? Yeah, well, I, I've actually... I get it from the AA Big Book, the Alcoholics Anonymous Big Book. They have this guidance in step 11, seek through prayer and meditation to know God's will and the power to carry it out. And so struggling alcoholics or, or addicts learn to start the day saying, hey, you know, God guide my thinking, make me a servant of your purposes today. You know, that's if you do that, you're going to get strength for it. I really like that pitch you gave too at the start of the, you know, it doesn't matter where you are or where you think people see you. It's yeah. more about your orientation. Are you pointed mm. towards yeah. Jesus? Are you heading towards the cross in life from wherever yeah. your starting point is? Or are you pointed away? Yeah. Um, a, be a better place to look than just am I perfect yeah. or not? We love the visible things that make me look like I'm oriented to God or that my heart's perfect to God, but God sees the heart, you know? And if, if I know, I know my own heart, I know how quickly my own heart can pivot away, you know, and get, and get focused on self or the world's goals, you know? So I have to, I have to pray. I mean, that's the number one yeah. practical tool is just praying to God and not just mechanically quickly praying, but really praying. We appreciate you always, Dale. Mm. Thank you so much for popping in. And again, let's remind you, if there's a verse that maybe you're struggling with, or there's a verse that's, um, a couple of verses maybe even, why don't you send that through to us? 8168, mm. the keyword is life, and we'll get Dale to unpack it next Thursday. Take care, Dale. God bless. Thank you.